Welcome to Electron Line. In this example, we're dealing with fireworks. Let's assume that we shoot some fireworks straight up. It reaches a height of 600 feet. When it reaches a maximum height, it explodes. Two pieces are shot, one to the left, one to the right. The piece on the left has a weight of 8 pounds. The piece on the right has a weight of 2 pounds. What are we supposed to figure out? First of all, how long will it be before the pieces fall back down to the ground? Secondly, what is the velocity of the two pound piece being shot to the right? Notice that the left piece, the eight pound piece, will reach a distance of 1,000 feet and it returns back to the ground. C, what is the impulse on the two pieces up here? D, what is the force on the two pieces, assuming that the amount of time of the explosion is 0 0.001 second? And finally, what is the impact velocity of the small piece when it reached back to the ground. So a lot of interesting things to try to figure out. First of all, how long will the pieces be in the air before they return back to the ground? Well, we can do that from simply assuming that if a piece falls from a height of 600 feet, how long does it take to get back down to the ground? So for that, we need to calculate time in the air. And we use the equation y equals y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times time plus one half g t squared. Now the final height will be zero, the initial height will be 1600, the initial velocity in the y direction is zero because they have just reached their maximum height, there's no vertical velocity, and since g is a minus 32 feet per second squared, we take half of that, that would be minus 16 times t squared, which means that t is equal to the square root of 1600 divided by 16, which is 100, which is 10 seconds. So answer number one, the time in the air before they come back down is 10 seconds. So notice from that we can calculate velocity one. We can calculate the velocity of the eight pound piece because b we can say that distance equals velocity times time or velocity equals distance divided by time. And so we know that it reaches a distance of a thousand feet and it does so in a time of 10 seconds which means that the velocity there would be 100 feet per second for the 8-pound piece. Now let's calculate the velocity for the 2-pound piece, and for that we can use the conservation of momentum. So still working on B, P initial equals P final. The initial, velocity, the initial momentum before explosion would be zero, and the momentum after explosion, that would be uh, 8 pounds times a minus 100 feet per second because I uh, might as well put in 100 feet per second feet per second so instead of using mass times velocity I'm using weight time velocity it doesn't really matter if we use mass or weight we get the same result but we know we have a negative 100 feet per second to the right and then we have plus the 2 pound piece times v2 which is the velocity to the right so then we know that V2 is equal to, we have, when we move that across, we get a positive 8 pounds times 100 feet per second, which is now positive, divided by the 2 pounds. Notice the pounds cancel out, so it doesn't matter if we use pounds or slugs or kilograms. And we can see that V4 times as much, or V2 is equal to 400 feet per per second. And so now we have the solution to our second question. We know the velocity of the two pound piece. Now three, we need to find the impulse. The impulse for part C can be defined as the force times delta T. But since we don't know delta T yet over here, what we can do is we can say that's equal to the change in the momentum, delta P. So the impulse uh, is equal to, well, let's see here, delta P would be mass times delta V. And since we know the mass and we know the delta V for either one, we can say that impulse therefore is equal to the mass, let's say uh, 8 pounds divided by 32 feet per second square, because that gives us slugs, impulse, times, uh, let's see here, times um, impulse is... Uh, force times delta T, or 8 pounds divided by that, times 100 feet per second. 
per second square, because that's the acceleration due to gravity, 100 feet per second, so we get pounds times seconds. 8,000 divided by 32 is equal to 250, so the impulse is equal to 8, that's 8,000 divided by 32, 250 uh, pounds times seconds. So the impulse is force times time, and those are the proper units for impulse, 250 pounds times seconds. Now the force. D, the force can be found by using impulse again. So now we can say that the force is equal to the impulse divided by delta T. If the impulse is two, 250 pounds times seconds, and we divide that by 0 0.001 second, that means we now have a force of 250,000 pounds. Seems like a lot of force. Let's see here. Thousand. Ooh, I see where I made a mistake. We have 100 feet per second, and I used 1,000 feet per second. I was thinking these numbers are quite high. So that would only be 25 pound seconds, and 25 pound seconds times divided by this would be 25,000 pounds, not 250,000 pounds. I was beginning to be suspicious of those very large numbers. Then I realized I, took the, I grabbed the wrong number. I was looking over here instead of the velocity one, which is 100 feet per second. So 100 feet per second gives us 25 pound seconds or a force of 25,000 pounds. Finally, uh, let's see here, velocity final. Velocity final is equal to question mark. Now notice that the final velocity will consist of two different velocities. It will consist of the horizontal velocity and the vertical velocity. And of course, V final will be the square root of the sum of the squares of the two, which means that V final will be equal to the square root of V sub X squared plus V sub Y squared. So V final will be equal to the square root of V sub X, and of course V sub X is V sub 2, which we found to be uh, 400 feet per second. And we're going to have to square that plus the vertical velocity, the velocity on the way down. All right, so the velocity on the way down and just a moment, let's see here. Are we supposed to find V1 or V2? V final. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. We can do for both. So that's V final for two. We'll do the same for V final for one. All right. What about the vertical velocity? Okay, vertical velocity, uh, time in the air. We know that time in the air is 10 seconds. And so we know then that the vertical velocity, velocity in the y direction will be equal to uh, g times t, which is equal to 32 feet per second times 10 seconds, which is equal to 320 feet per second. So it's falling down for 10 seconds, acceleration is 32 feet per second squared, so that, we'll, that means that we have 320 feet per second, and we have to square that. So v final for the second object is going to be, that's v final for object number two, will be equal to, well, that is uh, 400 squared plus 250 squared equals, take the square root, that would be 472 feet per second. And V final for the first object, the eight pound object, that would be the square root of, in the X direction would be 100 feet per second squared plus the same velocity in the vertical direction, 300 squared, but 320 squared, so that's 320 squared plus 100 squared equals, take the square root, and that would be 335 feet per second. And so you can see that that is the final velocities for both pieces as they reach the ground. The other piece, of course, will be in this direction with a horizontal and a vertical velocity. And that is how that's done.